Good morning, St. Phillips. My name is Mrs. Margak, and today I want to talk to you about why thankfulness is important. I wonder how many of you have to do jobs around the house just to help out as being part of your family. As a child, I did many jobs, and one of the jobs my mum would regularly ask me to help out with was taking the washing off the line. I am not going to lie, it was not my favourite job to do. And to be honest, it is still not my favourite job to do. So I would start out doing the job and I would be in a pretty bad mood. But partway through the job, probably just simply out of boredom, I would usually end up singing one of my favourite songs. You see, I grew up in a Christian family and we attended church and we would sing Christian songs all the time. So about 99% of the time, the song I would end up singing was a praise song to God. And whilst I was singing, I noticed that my attitude shifted. And instead of being annoyed about doing the job, everything lifted and I actually felt kind of happy. There was something about that moment of praise where I moved my attention off myself and focused on thankfulness to God, that something inside of me changed. There is someone in the Bible who found themselves in a pretty rotten situation, and it was actually a situation of their own doing. Have you heard of Jonah? Jonah is from the Bible, and to be honest, he was a pretty judgmental kind of guy. He did love and know God, but he also knew God's laws, and the people who lived in Nineveh were not so keen on following the laws of God. Jonah knew this was the case, and so when God said to Jonah, go and talk to the people of Nineveh, tell them that they need to change their ways, he was either a little bit too scared, or a little bit too judgmental, or maybe a little bit of both, and instead of doing what God asked, he hopped on the first available ship to sail in the complete opposite direction that God had asked him to go. In that moment, we would say that Jonah was really struggling with obedience. Unfortunately, in the same way that when we disobey a parent or teacher, there was a consequence for Jonah. From the moment he got on board that ship, a massive storm rose up and the waves were so high that it became dangerous and everybody on board panicked, thinking they were going to die on the boat. After a brief conversation, the people on board the boat realised that the storm had risen up because Jonah had disobeyed God. So they threw him overboard and whilst he sunk into the water, what the Bible describes as a huge fish was sent by God to swallow Jonah. And there he stayed for three days and three nights. Now, Three days and three nights is a very long time to stay anywhere. And if you've had to isolate in recent times, you'll know being in the same place at the same time is ordinary. But inside the belly of a fish certainly would not have been like staying in a glamorous hotel room. It would have stunk. There would have been no food or fresh water. And let's not even think about what he did to visit the bathroom. And do you know what? It took Jonah all of those three days and three nights to actually cry out to God. He was in a pretty, pretty bad place, he was in a pretty bad mood and life was not going well for him. But something happened to Jonah once he turned his attention to God and this is what the Bible says. When my life was slipping away, I remembered God and my prayer got through to you. But I'm worshipping you God, calling out in thanksgiving and I will do what I promised I will do. The Bible actually says once God realized that Jonah's heart had changed and that his heart was praising and thanking God, God heard Jonah's cry of thankfulness and the large fish spat him out of his belly onto the shore. You see, until Jonah brought himself to a place of thankfulness, his situation didn't change. But once he recognized his need to be thankful, everything changed. I wonder how life could be different for us if when life got tough, when we were tempted to just focus on ourselves and our own problems, if instead we shifted our thinking to thinking about what we were thankful for, I wonder how much life would change. Martin Seligman is a well-known psychologist who's explored a whole range of research on positive psychology. He's also looked at the impact that thankfulness and gratitude can have on a person. 
And did you know that people who are regularly thankful are more likely to have strong friendships? They are less likely to experience physical illness at a young age. People who are thankful are happier and less likely to experience depression or sadness. People who are thankful don't look to get revenge if they have been wronged. They actually sleep better at night and they even feel better about themselves. They have a good self-esteem. Now, if that isn't an advertisement for thankfulness, I don't know what else is. God knew we were wired this way because he created us. He knows how important thankfulness is. So today, don't be like Jonah and have to wait until life gets really bad before you remember to be thankful. Take the opportunity to look for the good things that you have in your life and what you have to be thankful for. So my challenge for you this morning is, sit there for a few moments and think about five things in your life that you can be thankful for and maybe even think about one person you could show thankfulness to. Have a great day, St. Phillips, and thank you for listening to this devotion.